you know, there's always something that's really bothered me about complainers. And so what I realized was I can get irritated and I can get annoyed, but I really wanted to kind of do a little bit of a deep dive. And I hope that you will join me in my little deep dive going down the rabbit hole to see energetically what is it about complainers that just bugs me so much? And it isn't just about their complaining. There's an energy component that comes with it. So thanks for tuning in to my channel. My name is Nancy Rebecca. I am a registered nurse. I do tend to always look on the op optimistic side of things. I don't do the rose colored glasses things. Like I, I definitely have a reality check about stuff. But when I'm around people who are just always complaining, that's where it's like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted from it. So if you find yourself constantly complaining about everything that someone is doing or what you're doing, or why it's not working out for you, then what Spirit is telling me that ultimately you have lost your ability to connect with your trust and your faith that there's this potential possibility that things might just work out out. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And when you have higher levels of trust and faith and belief, your spirit is able to present many more options than just a narrow few. There's always that little teaching that I loved. I learned from a, my friend Kim when she was talking about the frequencies and the AM frequency. If you're an AM radio station, you might be able to ex, um, share that AM radio station frequency about a hundred miles, but anything beyond a hundred miles, you're not able to be able to communicate that frequency. An FM station, let's say, can go a thousand miles. And then maybe you have um, satellite radio, digital radio. Um, what are the other ones? I don't remember. HD, 4K, whatever they are. Where they can go hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of miles. And so when you're this kind of complainer and you just stop everything and and I'm telling you, I, I can feel it like my shoulders. And I just like, I just want to plug my ears and say, just stop it already. <laughs> but that's the thing. If you are a complainer, you're limiting, you're limited to the frequency that you can tap into to be able to problem solve your life. So if you tend to be on the complaining side, this video is for you. And if you tend to be on the side where you have to listen to the complainer, this video is for you as well. So have you ever been in a group and everyone is kind of cheerful and they're excited about something. And then there's that one person that feels like they need to be the voice of reason, uh, that they need to give you a reality check because you are just not in alignment with what is truth. <clears throat> and to tell you, and they want to tell you why it can't work and why it's not possible. I do remember, and this was kind of a sad sort of thing. So, uh, my dog ate some of that sugar. I can't, that fake sugar. I can't remember xylitol. Oh, <gasps> anyway, got into a little tin of mints, had a little dusting of the tin, licked just a little dusting. Anyway, had a major reaction, went into a coma, had to go to the hospital. And so Yvonne was telling me that, um, that I needed to go to the hospital because, uh, Rama was going to die. And my intuition was telling me, no, he's not going to die. He's, he's going to make it through. He's going to grow and thrive. And we're going to have many more years with him. And uh, Yvonne said, you're being in denial. <laughs> you don't want to even think about the fact that he is going to die in the next few hours. So you are just telling yourself that he's going to live because you can't face facts that he's going to die. And so I kept checking in with my spirit and I couldn't feel any reaction. So I'm like, all right, am I disassociated? 
because he's my little, you know, lovey boy. And it's like, no, I can see him coming home. I can see him doing well. And I'll tell you, we had this kind of, you know, not meeting of the mind, but these head bashing conversations because she was told that he was not going to make it through the night. And she was told that they would have to be given him IV dextrose and all this stuff. Well, anyway, the bottom line is he survived. He came home and you never could tell the difference. So in that, that's what when I'm talking about someone who's complaining or someone who thinks negatively, they have lost that connection to trust and faith. Now, I had another dog during COVID who um, was not doing well, declining. She was older. She was like 13, 14 years old. And um, I remember Yvonne, it was COVID, Yvonne calling me in the parking lot. And she said, um, they, they said uh, that Tonda has to have surgery. And I said, do it. And she goes, yeah, but she might not live through the operation. And I'm like, she's going to live through the operation. She's going to live another three years. But if we don't get her this operation in the next 10 minutes, she's not going to make it. So I was very clear about that. And fortunately, you know, Yvonne could hear that. And sure enough, that's what happened. She had a benign tumor that was like the size of a football. All right. So she survived it. But when you have those strong intuitive senses or those strong psychic senses that go against what everybody is saying and people are complaining and they're telling you your head's off, um, you know, how do you deal with that? You know, how do you ground through that? How do you keep your own sense about things? So, um, one of the things is when someone says, you don't know, you don't know how to look for things, you know, it's like, you don't know how to look at things. You're, you're just looking at things through this narrow window. So if somebody tells you that, um, I love this one. You, you don't know how to fold clothes, right? Who taught you how to fold clothes? You don't know how to fold clothes. One of my favorite is the dishwasher. I hear this, believe me, I lived out of a suitcase for five years. Yvonne and I traveled the world and we lived with different people. And I will tell you, and all the different people we lived with, everybody loads the dishwasher differently. So anyway, I can kind of laugh about that. But do you remember during COVID, complaining was at an all time high and it had a right to be, I mean, not only, you know, whether it was politics and what you believed in politics or what you believed in COVID, whether to vaccinate, whether not to vaccinate, but we were having horrible deaths that were happening. We had, um, you know, a lot of, uh, a prejudice that was coming to the surface that was in our face. We had a lot of that sexual abuse um, in our face that was just at an all time high. We had um, um, a lot of conflicts around uh, people taking advantage of indigenous cultures. Like there was so much that was just, we were being bombarded with. <clears throat> and so I said that the, the complaining was at an all time high and nothing seemed to be able to have a positive outcome. And the moment that I might suggest a way to move forward in my smaller little group, the complainer would say that can't possibly go very far because our political system is so corrupt. I was like, okay. Or when I wanted to organize a smaller group, to talk about some potential ideas about movement, this other person would say, no one's ever going to be interested in anything like that. So can you relate to having a person in your life that is that way? So, um, yeah, I wrote, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what is happening in the energy field for someone who is a complainer? So <laughs> there's this one, do you remember Gulliver, Gull, Gulliver's Travels? It was a cartoon. I don't know. It's definitely over 40 years old. It was a cartoon and there was a character by the name of Glum. <laughs> you remember Glum? Glum was like, it'll never work. <laughs> Glum would say, we're doomed. It's hopeless. We're never going to make it. <laughs> and so this was Glum all the time, no matter what was happening. However, what I loved about Gulliver's Travels is they just let Glum be Glum. 
but they didn't let glum slow them down. Uh, they, they just still continued to envision what they wanted to envision and move forward. But let's talk about what's happening in the energy field of someone who's constantly complaining. So in their auric field, when I'm looking at their auric field, I wrote the words lights off. There's lights off. It's dark. It's like the dimmer switch turned all the way down or somebody's literally flipped the lights off. There's nothing, nothing spiritual happening in the energy field of the complainer. They are disconnected from the earth. They're disconnected from um, the cosmos. And there's this sense of like, I call it the candy wrapper aura, where it's a little twisted at the top, it's twisted at the bottom, kind of like one of those butterscotches where it's like, I got to do it all all myself. I can do it all myself. That, that they've lost trust and faith to depend on anybody else. And they most certainly have lost trust and faith and the ability to have dreams, desires, and hopes for the future. Kind of like glum. It's hopeless. We're never going to make it. We are doomed. So <clears throat> they are disconnected from their connection with the earth and the cosmos. The complainer's not happy until you're disconnected too. Can you relate to that? Like the moment you're disconnected, it's like, okay, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah, the politics is corrupted. Yeah, the banking system's corrupted. Yeah, then all of a sudden they're kind of gleeful that you've disconnected from your higher soul self and you've met them there at that vibration and frequency. So when you meet them at the vibe is where they have this personal sense of satisfaction. But here's what happens energetically with the complainer. The complainer drops energetic boulders out in front of you and everyone else. And the more you attempt to debate, the more energetic boulders are dropped like bombs in front of you. And so every time you try to move, it's like your whole auric field just feels the impact of that negativity, of that complaining. Um, and But why do complainers complain? So I really wanted to look at the energetics. So what Spirit was telling me was it's their human body that's on autopilot. So your human body is built to house your spirit. Your human body, it's built to survive and it's going to survive at all cost, right? It's going disconnected from spirit, disconnected from the earth, <laughs> butterscotch wrapper, twisty ties, self-reliant, only believes in the self and it's going to survive at all cost. So what does this mean? So this means if you're going to try something new, that you're going to venture out, it could be dangerous. It's hopeless. It could be, you could be doomed. It's never going to work. You're not going to be safe. You're putting yourself at risk. You might have the potential to not survive, right? So they go into this total survival mode. They're afraid they want to keep those that they love safe. So they want to make you afraid as well. So the human body is on autopilot. Your human body can drive a car. Your human body can make a sandwich, but your human body cannot be in touch with that flourishing creativity, that open hearted love and excitement, that that joy, that brightness, that spark of um, curiosity and intelligence, that comes directly from your spirit. So when connected to the spirit, the outcome of options grows and expands. So it's like at a picnic table, you've brought one dish and you're like, we're not going to make it. There's 50 people that's coming to this picnic. It's hopeless. There's no way this dish of green bean salad that I've made is going to feed 50 people. It's never going to work. 
Oh my God. Okay. But they're limited, right? They don't see that the 50 other people are bringing their own dish of food. They don't see that everybody's contributing to the multiple choices of delightful dishes that are spread out over the table. It's like that person who is limited, the complainer can only be in that place of fear. I remember once my um, meditation teacher, I said, how can you not organize the, um, it was like a picnic or whatever. Don't you need somebody to organize it? Don't you need somebody to call around and see who's bringing a meat dish, who's bringing a veggie dish, who's bringing a salad, who's bringing a dessert, who's bringing drinks. Like I was like, don't you need somebody to organize this? And I still remember my psychic meditation teacher said, if we have 12 people coming and 12 people bring cake and we have 12 desserts, then we're going to enjoy eating 12 desserts. And it was such a mind blower for me. It was like, well, of course, what would be wrong with that? <laughs> but this is how the complainer who has to be in control, who needs to manage things, why? Because they want to survive. They want to survive. But when you've got your spirit connected to you, not only is your spirit going to help you survive in every way, because your spirit is invested in you living. Your spirit has invested a lot of time and a lot of learning experience. Your spirit wants you to live as long as you are supposed to live. So you need to learn to reconnect with yourself. So I have guided meditation. So um, if you go to my website, intuitivemind.org, and um, it's under shopping or something like that. And it's under free stuff. And under the free meditations, there's a variety of meditations that you can do to reconnect your, to your spirit, reconnect to the God of your heart, reconnect to Mother Earth, dump those complaints, leave them with the complaint department at the center of the earth that's going to recycle them into optimistic, expanded new ways of being, believing, thinking, dreaming, and desiring. Something that's always bothered me about complainers is that they're not happy until you're complaining too. And that's always bugged me. So I'm not saying being super Pollyannish is the answer, but don't let the complainers bring you down. And if you are a complainer and you find yourself complaining a lot, try one of those meditations, reconnect to spirit and see if that can help you to release some of those lower frequency complaints. All right. Take care of everyone. I look forward to reading your, not your complaints, but your comments. Well, you can complain too. All right. Take care. Bye.